Pixar's critically acclaimed blockbuster Cars came out nearly two decades ago, so a lot of the kids who were mesmerized by the movie in 2006 are now old enough to notice its many other layers, including jokes, references, and quite frankly some very weird things that only adults noticed. There aren't any outright dirty jokes hidden in Cars, but there are a lot of suggestive ones that sail right over the heads of its five-year-old fans. For example, Lightning McQueen is a famous race car, and he's got the groupies to prove it. After his big race at the beginning of the movie, two red cars named Mia and Tia proclaim to be his biggest fans, and then literally flash him with their headlights. Later in the movie's central location of the sleepy town of Radiator Springs, Lightning meets Sally, who has a tribal-style pinstriping tattoo just above her bumper, the car's equivalent of a tramp stamp lower back tattoo. In another scene, Lightning barges in on Doc Hudson in his garage, or rather, doctor's office, where he's got Sheriff elevated to examine his undercarriage. Sheriff asks Lightning if he got, quote, a good peek. When Lightning tells Mater and the other cars that he discovered Doc Hudson was once a three-time winner of the illustrious racing championship, the Piston Cup, Mater shouts out, He did what in his cup? If you don't get it, say Piston Cup out loud three times fast. The names of characters and the actors filmmakers hired to play those characters offer many references that only parents in the know, old movie fans, and car enthusiasts would be hip to. For example, the late comedian and countercultural icon George Carlin gave voice to Fillmore, a hippie Volkswagen bus. The kind of car countless real hippies drove. Champion race car The King is voiced by Richard Petty, the NASCAR legend known as The King. Even Ray Maliazzi and his late brother Tom, aka Click and Clack, longtime hosts of National Public Radio Mainstay Car Talk, have cameos. They play the owners of Rusty's, the bumper ointment company that sponsors Lightning McQueen. Radiator Springs Diner equivalent, Flo's V8 Cafe, is operated by a former show car named Flo. Her job on screen primarily consists of server like duties. This parallels that of Florence Jean Castleberry, or just Flo, the sassy waitress played by Polly Holiday on the popular 70s sitcom Alice. As in the human world, car racing is a hugely popular sport in cars. But the cars aren't driving automobiles like humans do in the real world. Instead, they're essentially racing around a track using their actual bodies. That means auto racing in cars is essentially a super fast, super competitive track and field event. It's also very high stakes and highly competitive. Cars bump each other and jockey for position at high speeds, leaving each other in the dust or slammed against the wall. Spinouts, collisions, and accidents happen relatively frequently in real-world auto racing events. But the cars are so packed with protective equipment that drivers rarely get hurt. The vehicles take a lot of damage, but fans don't think too much about it because those cars don't feel pain. But they do in cars. Think about it, even the most minor racing incident is more or less a horrific injury. Getting a piece of the car's body knocked off? That's like if a human runner lost a body part mid-race. A blown tire? The equivalent of a shattered foot. Viewed this way, the aggressive racing style of the villainous Chick Hicks, which causes the king to roll over multiple times, equates to gladiatorial combat with intent to harm or kill. Pixar is known for lacing its films with well-hidden jokes and easter eggs, and Cars is no exception. Ever since its first appearance in Toy Story, the beat-up yellow Pizza Planet delivery truck has made an appearance in almost every Pixar movie. So it makes perfect sense that it would show up in Cars, a movie populated entirely with motorized vehicles. The Pizza Planet truck appears for just a quick flash as part of a crowd scene before one of Lightning McQueen's big races. In creating the car's world, everything about the human world had to be translated into its car equivalent. Usually it works. Cow tipping has been replaced with tractor tipping, and Flo's V8 Cafe serves gas and oil rather than food, for example. However, not everything is a direct parallel, making for some very strange moments. One example of this is how Lightning McQueen travels from race to race. As is the case with the real-world race car, he's hauled around in the back of a specially built truck. In Cars, that truck is presented as something between a private jet and a limousine stocked with amenities to ensure maximum comfort for Lightning. But because this is the world of sentient cars, the truck is a living thing. This means Mac drives down the freeway with Lightning McQueen literally inside of him. This is akin to a private jet pilot who keeps rich clients in his stomach. Kids can watch Cars on a surface level. Cars do stuff, Cars learn lessons, Cars race. 
Older people, however, may be left wondering, how and why is the world of cars this way? It's about a place virtually identical to 21st century Earth, only everything is built for cars rather than humans. But they also enjoy human culture that seems based on our real-world things, celebrities, and pop culture moments. Radiator Springs is situated on the disused Route 66. So what's going on here exactly? Does Cars take place in an alternate dimension where automobiles are the dominant species and humans don't exist? Or is this some sort of post-apocalyptic, post-human Earth where Cars have evolved and taken over for the now extinct human race? Either option feels like it could just as easily be the plot of a horror movie rather than a film for children. What? This place is crazy! Younger viewers in Pixar's target audience for the film may not even be able to read yet, but they probably still wouldn't understand the adult nature of the fictional products being pitched in cars. For example, Mac and Lightning McQueen drive past the top-down truck stop, which proudly boasts its convertible waitresses. In the land of cars, it means that the servers can take their tops down. In other words, they're topless. Lightning McQueen's primary race sponsor is Rusty's, a bumper ointment. It's a topical cream for a car's rear end, or the automotive equivalent of Preparation H, a product humans use to treat hemorrhoids. A major supplier of gasoline to the cars of cars is Dynaco. As gas is food to automobiles, this would make it the equivalent of a human food conglomerate. Adult viewers may also recognize it as a link to other Pixar movies. The Pizza Planet truck in Toy Story stops in to refuel at a Dynaco station. While some of the car characters in Cars perfectly embody their name, others are known by names that reflect their make, model, or function, designations that would be clear only to adults or viewers with at least a passing knowledge of automobile history. For instance, in his career as a race car, Lightning McQueen gets around from race to race in the back of a Big Mac truck, a friendly, helpful behemoth whose name is literally Mac. Prickly Radiator Springs physician Doc Hudson is named after and has the appearance of a Hudson Hornet, a super fast car of 1950s vintage. Differently, local hotel operator Sally Carrera gets her name from the Carrera model of Porsche, of which she is an example. Radiator Springs town founder Stanley is named for the Stanley Steamer, an early steam-powered car, while his surviving spouse Lizzie gets her name from the nickname for the Ford Model T, also known as a Tin Lizzie. Radiator Springs Old Town Doctor Doc Hudson is voiced by late Hollywood legend Paul Newman, who also raced professionally. Older viewers of Cars may remember that Newman played a speedy driver on screen in the 1969 movie Winning, which hit theaters a year after Bullet, an action-packed police movie that featured one of the most legendary car chase scenes ever shot. That film starred Steve McQueen, who famously did much of his own stunt work and had earned a reputation in films like The Great Escape as a fearless driver. McQueen was a hot shot on the asphalt, on screen and off, not unlike Lightning McQueen, with whom the actor shares a name. So in the first Cars movie, Doc Hudson is initially dismissive and openly hostile toward Lightning, with the animosity alluding to a real-life conflict between McQueen and Newman. At the peak of their success in the 1960s and 1970s, Paul Newman and Steve McQueen were seen as Hollywood rivals, often competing for the same roles. McQueen was nearly cast in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, but turned the role down when he learned Newman would be getting top billing. McQueen later made a passion project out of the 1971 film Le Mans, where he played a driver who delivered the famed line, When you're racing, it's, it's life. Anything that happens before or after, it's just waiting. Paul Newman took things one step further in 1979, when he raced a Porsche 935 in the real Le Mans, finishing first in his class and second overall in a rain-soaked race. In 1974, the duo were paired together on screen for the first and only time in the blockbuster film The Towering Inferno. When McQueen got his script for the Irwin Allen disaster flick, he counted out his lines to see if he had more than Newman. While on the surface it's a kid's movie about talking cars, Pixar's Cars is a poignant tale of redemption, of one individual realizing what's important in life. This is a story of choices, regrets, and one laced with melancholy, which has way more appeal to adults than it does to kids. It also might feel familiar because older viewers may already have consumed this story in a very similar form. In 1991, Michael J. Fox starred in the live-action comedy movie Doc Hollywood, a moderate box office hit that lived on for years thanks to home video and cable TV re-airings. It has almost the exact same plot as Cars released 15 years later. 
Fox played cocky young plastic surgeon Dr. Ben Stone, driving across the country in his red sports car until he crashes it in Grady, South Carolina. As a sentence for the property damage he causes, he's forced to work in the local hospital for a while. He decides to stay in Grady after falling in love with charming ambulance driver Lou, played by Julie Warner. In Cars, cocky young car Lightning McQueen is riding across the country on his way to a race until he crashes in Radiator Springs, and as a sentence for the property damage he causes, he's forced to repair the road. He decides to stay in Radiator Springs after falling for charming motel proprietor Sally. The most idolized race car in Cars is easily the King. His name is, after all, The King, and that nickname comes straight from Richard the King Petty, the all-time winningest racer in NASCAR history who voices his Pixar counterpart. Older viewers and racing fans may notice a couple of famous on-the-track events from Petty's illustrious career adapted into the action of cars. In the film's climactic race, The King suffers a horrific spin-out and crash, mirroring one the real Petty endured in the 1988 Daytona 500. In a show of remarkable sportsmanship and growth for the once incredibly selfish individual, Lightning McQueen cuts short his assured win to push the king across the finish line. A similar event went down at Daytona in 1976, although it was Petty's pit crew that helped him finish the race, not another racer. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.